The opening scene features two sisters, Kate and Liz, who land at Cyprus Airport for their vacation. Kate, being the older sister, takes care of everything for her younger sister. However, Liz doesn't want to be treated like a baby, so she often expresses her frustration towards her sister. She is always on her phone, texting her best friend Christy and complaining about Kate. The girl is so busy with her phone that she forgets the passports on the bench while leaving the airport. That's why Kate treats you like a baby, stupid. After a long drive, the sisters finally reach their hotel. During the check-in process, Liz realizes that she had left the passports at the airport bench. Upon learning this, Kate scolds her for being so irresponsible, but Liz starts arguing with her instead of apologizing for her mistake. As the two fight, the receptionist offers them a solution. She will call the port and retrieve their passports. Kate expresses her gratitude for the help, and before heading towards the room, she asks if it's possible to have some food, because they are starving. In response, the receptionist informs them that the kitchen is already closed, and suggests checking out the nightclub downstairs. Later, while Kate is in the shower, she receives a call from Liz's doctor inquiring about her well-being. Here, it is revealed that Liz has been suffering from depression, but she is now on the path to recovery and appears to be doing better. Kate assures the doctor that she's taking proper care of Liz's medication. After finishing her shower, she steps out of the bathroom and finds Liz already asleep. She opts not to disturb her and proceeds to the nightclub alone. There, she is approached by a woman named Mira, who is under supervision of her boyfriend Jack. Unbeknownst to Kate, the couple are con artists who rob people and fund their lavish lifestyle. Mira strikes up a conversation with Kate and asks if she's waiting for anyone. When the latter answers in the negative, Mira concludes that she is alone. She then asks her for a dance, and our girl reluctantly agrees to it. On the dance floor, they are joined by two local Cypriots, uh, Andreas and Nick. While the four of them are busy, Mira discreetly steals Kate's room key and secretly passes it to her boyfriend. After some time of dancing, Kate captures some selfies with her new friends and then intends to leave. However, she is stopped by Mira, who wants her to stay until Jack finishes stealing the money from her room. At the same time, Andreas mentions that he owns a hot air balloon <laughs> and invites everyone for a ride. He's a real Willy Wonka son of a bitch. Although hesitant at first, Kate eventually agrees when Andreas points out that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You'll never meet this hopeless a dork ever again. The group then gets into his car and drives to their destination. Upon arrival, the boys start preparing the hot air balloon. Andreas instructs Nick to tether a rope to the car's wheel to keep the balloon stationary. Nick? follows the instructions, but he forgets to tie the other end of the rope to the balloon. In the meantime, Jack disguises himself as a waiter and heads to Kate's room. Inside the room, Liz awakens to find a picture of Kate partying with her new friends and feels hurt. She confides in her best friend about her sister leaving her and partying alone for the entire night. In order to teach Kate a lesson, Liz plans to play a prank on her. She decides to hide in the closet and make it appear as if she ditched her. Following this, she goes to hide inside a closet, and at the same time, Jack enters the room with the stolen key. Liz is scared to see the guy entering the room with a knife, and texts her best friend about the situation. A short while later, Jack opens the closet only to find Liz. The girl screams in horror and rushes into the bathroom, locking herself inside. On the other hand, back on the set of Joe Dirt, the group takes off on their hot air balloon and enjoys the city's scenery from the top. After a while, Kate realizes that they are actually moving. She alerts the rest of the group members, and this prompts Andreas to scold Nick for his negligence, leading to a heated argument between the two. Amidst this, Mira notices that the hot air balloon is moving towards windmills. In a swift move, Andreas increases the flame, allowing the balloon to get up as high as possible to cross over the windmills. Following this, everyone crouches low and prays to avoid a collision. At one point, Nick stands up to check the situation, but he has no time to react. When a blade from a windmill strikes the balloon's basket. As a consequence, Nick is thrown off, while Andreas is knocked unconscious after a piece of wood pierces his thigh. The two women urgently search for a first aid kit, but find nothing useful. Sensing the urgency of the situation, Kate takes off her shirt, because of course, and ties it around Andreas's leg to control the bleeding. While the women are in a state of panic, Nick suddenly pops up in the clouds, holding on to the rope. Witnessing this, Mira tries to reach the rope with the help of Kate, but Nick is unable to maintain his grip for that long, and eventually 
falls to his death. Willy Wonka vibes intensify. Back at the hotel, Liz comes out from the bathroom and rushes to the front desk. She reports the robbery attempt to the receptionist and requests that he contact the police. In the meantime, Jack, fearing being arrested, leaves the hotel without committing the robbery. On his way to his car, he leaves a voicemail for Mira, chastising her for not ensuring that their target was alone. He threatens her that if he gets arrested, he will break up with her forever. Shortly after, a police officer arrives at the hotel and inquires about the incident. In response, the receptionist complains that Liz and her sister arrived at their hotel without their passports, and now her sister has abandoned the little girl. After regaining consciousness, Andreas reveals that he isn't permitted to fly the balloon because it actually belongs to his boss. Hearing this, Mira explodes in anger, yelling at him for lying just for the sake of impressing girls. Kate implores them to stop arguing and focus on landing the large balloon instead. However, it's already too late as they are now far from land, flying over the middle of the ocean. Okay, now this is my worst nightmare. Their only option is to use the warm air and drag themselves back to the land. As time passes, Kate starts getting worried about her sister, who is alone in the hotel room. Upon hearing this, Mira realizes that she and Jack are in danger of getting caught by the police. Before long, the group notices a boat in the distance, which raises their hope of being rescued. They wave and shout for assistance, but the boat's passengers mistake their gestures as friendly waves and wave back. In the midst of this, Andreas tries to join Kate and Mira, but ends up falling into the water. This sends the women into a state of panic, and they begin arguing on who should jump down with the rope to rescue him. They waste too much time, which causes Andreas to drown in the water. To make matters worse, the boat also starts leaving. In an effort to attract the boat's attention, the duo decides to use the banner from the balloon. They try to grab it, but only manage to detach the tops, which then go even lower. Following this, Mira has Kate hold onto her legs as she reaches for the bottom of the banner. She somehow manages to retrieve it, but despite this, they have no pen or marker. So, Kate resorts to using her own blood to write an essay. SOS message on it. Regrettably, their efforts prove futile, as the boat has gone too far away, and no one notices the banner. In the aftermath, Mira removes her shirt, because of course she does, and uses it to wrap Kate's injured hand, in order to stop the bleeding. The scene cuts back to the hotel, where a police officer has summoned an American consulate named Sophia. She intends to take Liz into child protection, but the girl wants to stay there and wait for her sister's return. Liz also suspects that her sister might be in danger, because because she had shared her location before disappearing, which means that she hasn't abandoned her. Sophia tries to explain that Liz can't stay at the hotel any longer, and has no alternative but to accompany her. In response, Liz comes up with an idea, and persuades the consulate to set out in search of Kate. Following this, the two of them head towards the last location pinned by Kate, which Sophia recognizes as a tourist destination. On the other hand, one cylinder on the hot air balloon runs out, so the women quickly switch the gas pipes to the other cylinder. Here, another problem arises. They don't have a matchstick to ignite the fire. With the way this movie's logic works, they should just take their pants off too. That would be hot enough. Soon after, Kate notices a condom, which strikes her with an idea. She fills it with vodka and exposes it to the sunlight, creating a magnifying glass effect. Using this trick, they ignite a dollar bill and insert it into the burner, resulting in the hot air balloon to fly again. Rarely does a condom make anyone that happy. Upon seeing the smoke generated by the burning dollar bills, Kate comes up with another plan. She wants to create excess smoke in order to capture attention for help. They then start taking pieces of the balloon and wrapping it around the dollar bills to burn it. Amidst this, Mira shares her story about never getting the opportunity to go to school and have a better life. She also compliments Kate on being a strong and independent woman. In the next scene, as Liz and Sophia arrive at the tourist destination, they locate Andreas's car. Inside, they discover a small camera containing video footage of Kate and her group taking off in the hot air balloon. After this discovery, Sophia contacts the pilot, only to learn that he's on family vacation. In the meantime, Mira notices a signaling wire in the balloon. She detaches it and connects it to Kate's phone, which acts as an antenna. The phone then catches a signal, and Kate immediately sends her current location to her sister. Moments later, the phone runs out of battery, and 
shuts down abruptly. Upon receiving the location, Liz shows it to Sophia and requests that they head in that direction. Sophia agrees, and the two soon arrive at the port. They then hop into a dinghy and set off towards the indicated location. By this time, the hot air balloon has landed on the water, leading to a state of panic for the two women. Seeing death in front of her eyes, Mira bursts into tears and confesses how she and her boyfriend planned to break into Kate's hotel room by stealing her key card. Despite this revelation, Kate isn't angry at her, but she's more concerned about her sister. Elsewhere, Jack retrieves some of his hidden money and drives away in his car with his other girlfriend. They stop at a hotel, and while Jack is in the shower, his so-called new girlfriend steals all of his money and car key before fleeing the scene. The hot air balloon is now completely in the water. Kate manages to swim out of it, but Mira seems to be stuck inside. Realizing that she cannot swim, Kate swims back and rescues her just in time. They then cling to a floor floating cylinder and wait for help. Not long after, they spot a large cargo ship approaching, raising their hopes of being finally rescued. However, the captain and the other passengers can't see them due to the larger ship size. As a result, the ship passes by, leaving the two of them stranded yet again. Meanwhile, the dinghy's engine stops working, leaving Liz and Sophia stranded in the middle of the ocean. Despite this setback, Liz doesn't give up and remains determined to find her sister. She hands Sophia a rowing paddle, and they continue the rest of their journey by rowing. After a long while, they arrive at the pinned location. They find no one in sight. A clever Liz then uses air horn signals to create loud noises. Kate and Mira can hear the sound, but are unable to respond loudly enough. Right then, Mira uses her grandmother's lucky mirror to reflect sunlight, pinpointing their exact location. Finally, Liz and Sophia locate the two of them and row towards their direction immediately. They pull them on board, and there's an emotional reunion between the two Sisters. They introduce each other to their new best friends, and the movie ends as the four make their way back. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.